Welcome back to Razorback Reels. I'm Drew Chamberlain. And I'm Ani Olivas. Thank you for joining us. Entertainment news has been ablaze this week, so it's only fitting we begin our show discussing all the hot gossip. Some of the biggest news finds a British comedian in the hot seat. Russell Brand has been accused of sexual assault and rape, according to an investigation by UK Sunday Times. Brands denied all of the allegations in a video posted to social media, garnering the support of Andrew Tate, Tucker Carlson, and Elon Musk. Ani, what's your opinion on Brand, and how has he handled the controversy? Um, well, obviously, having people like Andrew Tate, Elon Musk, and Tucker Carlson in your corner, not a great look. No. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's just, there's better ways to go about these things. And, you know, we've seen time and time, and time again, um, you know, awful celebrity apology videos. And he didn't even apologize. So, you know, I, I can't say that I didn't expect this or see this coming. I kind of feel like I had a sixth sense about him, but Sure, whatever. I totally agree. I mean, having those people in your corner, it's not really the right crowd I think you want to have in your corner, <laughs> yeah. depending on something like this. Not really who you want to be associated right. with. Right, and anyway, moving on. From one controversy to the next, we turn our attention to the music industry. Fans of rapper Blueface were horrified to learn of a now deleted picture on X, AKA Twitter, the explicit picture of his infant son was attached to a rant about the child's mother, Christiane Rock. Blueface is now claiming a social, me a social media hack led to the explicit image being posted. Drew, what do you think about this hacking claim? Uh, well, I feel like this isn't the first time someone has posted something really obscene, vulgar, or explicit, and they've blamed it on being hacked. Regardless, I feel as if the fact that there was even a photo taken of an explicit, yeah. an explicit photo taken of an infant is bad in and, in and of itself, and so I can't really see a lot of silver linings here or positive things about this at all. I, I think this is a shameful thing on pretty much everyone's end. Yeah, exactly, and I think he's been in the spotlight for multiple things that he's been doing around his children, um, so. Yeah, not good. Just on top of everything yeah. else. Anyway, to round out this week's real talk, we've got to address the mouse of house, Disney. Amid the writer and actor strike, public perception of the media giant is tense. To make matters worse, Disney is raising their streaming serv service prices. The Disney-owned streamers, Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN, will increase their subscri subscription fees in October. Ani, how do you feel like these services are worth the cost? I mean, like, personally, what, who, Disney is, like, $16 a month or something like that? Too much. I, yeah, it's just too much, and I don't, as, as someone, I don't know if I'm, like, making this about me, but I don't really spend that much time on streaming services, but I just, you know, I pay for Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. which I'm still on the student one, which is, like, $6 a month, yep. so, like, anything more than that, I'm good. I, I can't say I'm a huge fan of either of these, but I am a huge fan of Hulu because right now I'm watching New Girl, and so oh, okay. if they raise the price to where I can't finish New Girl, then I'm gonna be very upset, so hopefully I can finish it before they raise those prices. Exactly. While we're here at Razorback Reels trying to be fair journalists, sometimes the tea is just too hot to ignore. Our next, segment, our next segment, D1 Drama, covers all the crazy headlines of the week. We have Elena Thompson in studio to give us all the juicy details of Hollywood's hottest couples. Thanks guys, I'm back here at Razorback Reels to tell you all about the hottest new couples taking over Hollywood, or better yet, Kansas City. Up first, as I'm sure many of you have seen, Taylor Swift is reportedly dating Chiefs player Travis Kelsey. The rumor started after Kelsey attended the after after Kelsey attended attended Taylor Swift's Eras tour all the way back in July, where after he attended, Kelsey said that he wished he had been able to give Taylor a friendship bracelet with his number on it. But what really solidified these rumors happened this past weekend. Taylor Swift attended the Chiefs game with none other than Kelsey's mom to watch him challenge the Chicago Bears. She was seen cheering on Kels all decked out in red. The pair was then seen riding into the sunset together in Kelsey's car, better yet, the getaway car. Kelsey isn't the only one Swift has been seen with though lately. She was spotted going to dinner with none other than Sophie Turner. Fans speculate that the two were talking about Mr. Perfectly Fine himself. Since Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner asked for a divorce, there have been lots of developments and some seemingly, seemingly bad blood blooming between the two, between the used to be couple. Just this last weekend, Sophie actually filed a lawsuit against Joe and asked him if he would return their two children to their permanent residence in England. 
The kids had been on tour with the Jonas Brothers so that Sophie could focus on a movie that she was filming. But according to the lawsuit, Joe Jonas refused to return the children's passports back to Sophie and is refusing to send the kids back home to England. And last but not least, Pete Davidson is once again dating a new Hollywood A-lister. Rumor has it that Pete and Madeline Klein started dating following the split of his previous partner who he dated for for less than a year. Madeline attended Pete's comedy show in Las Vegas and the two were seen spending time together after the show. The pair allegedly want to keep their relationship private, but hopefully soon we will have some more juicy details. That's unfortunately all the time that I have left, so I'm going to be sending it back to the, the anchors. For Razorback Reels, I'm Elena Thompson. Thanks, Elena, for updating us on all of the celebrity buzz. Coming up, we'll be diving into Hollywood's biggest fight yet. Stick around to see who the key players are. Welcome back to Razorback Reels. Normally our next segment of the night is winners and losers, but this week, instead of focusing on individuals thriving or failing, we want to highlight a huge potential win for the entertainment industry. Here to break down the historic Hollywood strikes is Razorback Reels reporter, Alyssa Coleman. Thanks, Ani. We've all heard about the strikes going on in Hollywood, but maybe you aren't sure of exactly what's happening. Let's break them down. Who's involved, why are they striking, and what is the impact? Here's what you need to know. There are two big organizations on strike in Hollywood at the moment. The Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. For everyone's convenience, these are commonly referred to as the WGA and SAG-AFTRA. These organizations are unions formed by writers and actors to protect themselves from having their talent taken advantage of. So, why are they on strike? Since May 1st of this year, the WGA has been picketing protesting the standards that are put in place for the treatment of workers in the film industry. Writers are tired of being underpaid, overworked, and exploited, and for 146 days they have made that clear. The WGA is negotiating with the AMTPP, or the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Studios. This organization includes many big studio names that you know, like Disney, Paramount, Universal, and more. The Writers Guild is demanding better overall compensation for its writers, including residual payments for streaming services, payment for each time they edit or rewrite a piece, and more fair wages. SAG-AFTRA has followed the actions of the WGA closely, beginning their own strike on July 14th of 2023. They've also been negotiating with the AMTPP, requesting better pay for their members and improvement in things like retirement and health benefits. One thing that both unions are demanding is protection against artificial intelligence. Writers and actors alike are concerned that AI could be detrimental to their careers if there are not regulations in place to keep things from getting out of control. Many are speculating that an agreement about AI has been the main point of contendency between the unions and studios, given that it is an uncharted territory. As a result of these strikes, the productions of many movies and TV shows have stopped completely. Both strikes include a full stop of work for all of their members, meaning that without writers and actors, the show can't go on. While the general public is disappointed to hear that they will have to wait to watch their favorite films and TV shows, this strike has been monumental for the entertainment industry as a whole. Events as large as the Emmys have been postponed as a result, and writers hope that this is an indication that the industry is beginning to understand the importance of fairly compensating their talent. As you may have heard, the WGA has just announced they have come to a tentative agreement with the AMPPP as of September 24th. While they have not yet disclosed the details of this agreement, they have said that this deal is, quote, exceptional. We all hope that this is the end of a long road for writers in Hollywood and the start of fair treatment and compensation. They have suspended any picketing until further notice, but writers have not yet returned to work. As for SAG-AFTRA, the, the actors remain on strike until they can come to a similar agreement with the AMPPP. The WGA continues to stand with them, and the rest of America is hoping to hear similar good news. Tuning in to learn all about the current strikes in Hollywood. Reporting for Razorback Reels, I'm Alyssa Coleman. Thanks, Alyssa, for that recap of the monumental labor movement in the in entertainment world. After the break, we'll be traveling back in time to one of music's biggest nights. So grab your astronaut helmets and flags because we're heading to the VMAs. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Razorback Reels. The entertainment industry is full of award shows year round. And our next segment, Red Carpet Recap, covers just that. The MTV 
Video Music Awards happened two weeks ago, and we're finally back in the studio to report on everything that happened. Reporting live in studio to talk all about it is Gigi Kramer. The 2023 VMAs took place on September 12th, and it was by all means a historic year for the awards. Women absolutely dominated in both nominations and wins, and today I want to highlight just a few of them. Starting off with a personal favorite, Taylor Swift was nominated for 11 awards and took home nine. This gives her 23 VMAs across her entire career. Among the nine awards she picked up, she picked up her third directing win of her career for the anti-hero music video. Swift is one of only two directors who have won this category in back-to-back -back years. Taylor also gained some attention online for her hilarious reactions and overall sense of joy throughout the awards. It was amazing to watch her on the crowd reaction camera and it was definitely a highlight of the night for me. Shakira showed up this year to absolutely blow everyone away to nobody's surprise. She won two awards, including Best Collaboration with artist Carol G for their song TQG. Beyond the awards, Shakira delivered one of the best performances of the night. She sang an incredible 10-minute medley of all of her biggest hits. Every single second of the performance was high energy. She sang, she danced, she changed costumes, got lifted into the air. I think she played guitar at one point. Shakira definitely pulled out all of the stops. Now, from the pink carpet to the stage, this next star absolutely shined in every aspect. Olivia Rodrigo shimmered in her dress, which was made of more than 150,000 Swarovski crystals, but Olivia was not one to let her look upstage her performance. Olivia's performance started off as expected with her sitting on stage to perform her song Vampire. However, she stunned the crowd halfway through with a planned malfunction. <laughs> Set pieces were falling, literal sparks were flying, and a stagehand came out to escort Rodrigo off stage. The celebrity reactions were highly entertaining as some was genuinely concerned for Olivia. Seconds later though, she reappeared much to everyone's relief to complete her mashup by performing Get Him Back, another song off her most recent album, Guts. The next artist has been in the industry for many years, but she gained a lot of more mainstream popularity since 2021. Of course, we're talking about none other than Sabrina Carpenter. Carpenter has been opening for Taylor Swift's South American leg of the Eras tour and took a break for the VMAs. Sabrina performed hit songs Feather and Nonsense and delivered a fresh performance. Many fans were excited to see her pick up the phone in the middle of her performance as they think it could be alluding to a possible Taylor Swift collaboration in the future, especially given the fact that Sabrina has been opening for Taylor. While that's just speculation for now, it's safe to say for certain that she gave an outstanding performance. While there are many artists that I didn't get the chance to cover tonight, I want to offer the biggest congratulations to all of the nominees and winners. I'm so excited to see all the music that gets released before the next VMAs. For Razorback Reels, I'm Gigi Kramer. Thanks, Gigi, for recapping the iconic Video Music Awards. Now, I don't know about you, Ani, but I think Taylor Swift is very worthy of all the awards she won. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, yeah. a, a part of all the I awards agree. she won, I think Olivia Rodrigo looked incredible in that, what was it, 150,000 crystal dress? I thought yep. it was a very, very well put together piece of clothing that she looked great in. A lot of great reactions and stars from the night. What do you think? Yeah, I think I actually, I actually missed the VMA, VMAs live, but I did go back and watch uh, like a recording of it and it was so entertaining. I remember Selena Gomez was made into like a bunch of memes for the night and that was super entertaining. Um, I just love her and uh, especially amid all of like her and Taylor Swift's resurfaced like um, friendship pictures and things like that, you know, they, they don't want it. They don't want us to forget that they're still best friends, mm -hmm. but don't tune us out yet. We're sticking to music with an album review after the break. This segment, Hogwild Harmonies, covers all things music. Here to talk about one of country music's biggest releases, we have Razorback Reels reporter Isabel Babin. As I grew up never listening to country music, I found myself impressed by one country album in particular. Zach Bryan's self-titled album was recently released and has immediately grasped the attention of many. Before we jump into the album, let me introduce you to country music's newest star. Zach Bryan was an active duty member of the Navy and is now a rising country star. He started uploading music to YouTube in 2017 and eventually his song Heading South went viral. In October 2021, Bryan announced that he was honorably discharged from the Navy so that he could pursue his music career. He then went on to release his major label debut, American Heartbreak. 
This past May, he received the Academy of Country Music Award for New Male Artist of the Year. And just three months later, on August 25, he released his self-titled fourth album, which debuted at number one. Now that we have the history, let's talk about the album itself. The album opens with a poem called Fear and Fridays, where he describes the, his inspiration for the album. In the poem, he talks about the things he's accomplished and experienced so far in his life and how it's brought him to where he is now. Following the poem are 15 tracks. But before we get into some of the biggest songs, let's talk about the features on this album. There are four features on four different tracks. Those tracks are Hey Driver, featuring The War and Treaty, Holy Roller, featuring Sierra Farrell, I Remember Everything, featuring Casey Musgraves, and Spotless, featuring The Lumineers. All of these features are big names in the country music industry and have all spoken out about their time with Zach Bryan. Features like this show that he has earned the respect of his peers in the country artist community. Some tracks pull from Bryan's personal life. The 14th track, titled Smaller Acts, is rumored to be inspired by his new girlfriend, Brianna. Keen observers may recognize Brianna from her online profile as B Brianna Chicken Fry. The track, I Remember Everything, featuring Casey Musgraves, is the 11th song on the album and is rumored to be inspired by the relationship he used to share with his ex-wife, Rose Madden. Since the album's release, there has been some controversy over fans disapproving of the way he ended his marriage with Rose. However, it seems that the love for his art has overpowered any backlash. While a lot of these songs are about romance and relationships, a few tracks are a little sadder and describe feelings of hopelessness and despair that Brian has encountered in his life. For example, East Side of Sorrow and Tourniquet are two tracks that have personally brought me to tears. This album gained a lot of attention quickly and has raving reviews from fans across the nation, including myself. Overall, this is a beautiful album from start to finish, and it would make a good addition to any playlist. Reporting for Razorback Reels, I'm Isabel Babin. Thanks for giving us all a great album to check out, Isabel. I don't, I don't know about you. Uh, I have a lot of great things to say about Zach Bryan. Mm -hmm. I saw him in concert recently yeah. these past couple months, mm -hmm. and I have tickets to see him again over a year from now, and I am absolutely in love with this new album. I think there's a lot there, especially a lot of those collaborations, like yes. with the War and the Treaty, the Lumineers. Mm -hmm. uh, but are there any like you think collaborations or things that like Zach Bryan could work on, or like new projects? I'm so excited that you asked me this because I, one thing about me, I love Casey Musgraves. I mm. love her till the day I die. She is my everything, and I'm just so excited. I literally just listened to the album just for Casey Musgraves, and it was a great album. I'm actually ple pleasantly surprised. I didn't, I'm not that much into like country music these days, but I have definitely been listening to this album since cause, because of Casey Musgraves. Oh, I totally agree. And yeah. Casey Musgraves is a great introduction into people who may not be oh, super absolutely. into country. And so mm -hmm. I, that's totally great. And I totally agree with you. But we're not done yet. Stick around to find out more about local art coming to the Hill. Welcome back to Razorback Reels. Our final segment of the night focuses on all things local. Though Fayetteville isn't a traditional hub for national entertainment, many local organizations have stepped up to create a vibrant entertainment scene. Bud Walton Arena will host the 2023 Rewired Fest. The free event will be home to live music, creator talks, and lots of gaming. Band Ted Hammock and the campaign are back in the studio. The Fayetteville musicians are also hitting the road October 6th. That's all the time we have for this evening. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Razorback underscore Reels. I'm Drew Chamberlain. And I'm Ani Olivas. Have a great night.